You're a part-time lover and a full-time friend The monkey on your back is the latest trend I don't see what anyone could see in anyone else But you Kiss you on the brain in the shadow of the train Kiss you all starry-eyed, my body swinging from side to side I don't see what anyone could see in anyone else but here is the church and here is the steeple we sure are cute for two ugly people i don't see what anyone could see in anyone else but you Levels, forgive me the trees forgive me so why can't you forgive me i don't see what anyone could see in anyone else but I will find my niche in your car with my mp3 dvd rumble pack guitar I don't see what anyone could see in anyone else But you <laughs> Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B. Oh, beautiful song, beautiful song. I don't know why that song puts a puts a big smile on my face. I feel that. I feel that viscerally, man. The moldy peaches. God, fucking great music, right? Starting off the day with some great, great music by the moldy peaches. So now let's dive into the horror story. Uh, so the Dems, uh, if we roll the tape back, not even two months ago, on the streets of New York City, Jeffrey Epstein, the big Epstein, Epstein pedogate was going to be the Democrats' strategy to beat Trump, right? It could create a distraction because nobody wants to talk. They don't want to talk about the issues. They don't want to talk about health care in this country. They don't want to talk about the military-industrial complex. They don't want to talk about big pharma killing people, wars, insurgency wars, you know, people living in abject poverty, the 99% controlled by the 1%. They don't want to talk about that, the Dems. I, there's a few of them that do, Bernie Sanders, a little bit of Elizabeth Warren, and certainly Tulsi Gabbard. But for the mo- most part, under the leadership of Nancy Pelosi, they want all of that, all those issues to go away and create some sort of distraction. So now we have our distraction. Right? Nancy Pelosi now has the distraction that's going to carry us into the election. And that now is Ukraine gate. <laughs> right? We couldn't get, they couldn't get Pedogate, they couldn't get Pedogate to stick. So they tried, uh, they tried, uh, now they're going to try Ukraine Gate. All right, so it's heating up. It's heating up. It looks like they're getting a sticking point on this. They're going to try to impeach Trump. Um, and that's just the way it is. So the, the, the New York Post is reporting it. They didn't even do a, uh, a editorial. It's more opinion. This guy Goodwin. <laughs> that's my brother Goodwin. That's my, my, my pseudonym's brother's name, Goodwin. Goodwin, Nancy Pelosi, will regret a rushing into impeachment push. Right? But here's what he says, and this is very important. Instead, Pelosi plunges the country into a nightmare by surrendering, surrendering to the most radical members of her party and the Trump-hating left-wing press. <clears throat> political, <clears throat> political mistakes don't get much bigger or more consequential than this. I'd have to agree with that. And he says this, and this is what I just said, you know, two minutes ago. Impeachment is now the next year's election, is what next year's election will be about. Impeachment is now what next year's election will be about. Not immigration or health care or the economy or national security or anything that really matters to working people across the country. Those who get up and go to work in offices and stores build the bridges, plow the fields, care for the children, and keep us safe are officially now an afterthought to Pelosi's foolish direction. I got to agree with that. I mean, I, I just have to agree with that. Let's look, at, let's look again. We're going to listen to Trump in his own words. Trump went in front of the cameras, sitting right next to the Ukraine president, and spelled it out. He spelled out exactly what's going on. We'll take a look at that. But here's the allegation. Right, the initial allegation. This is the unclassified, declassified 
phone conversation between the president of the Ukraine and the president of the United States, Donald Trump. And Trump says, firstly, these are the two sticking points. I would like you to do us a favor. Uh, through, though, because our country has been through a lot and Ukraine knows a lot about it. I would like you to find out what happened with this whole situation with Ukraine. They say CrowdStrike. I guess you have one of, the, of your wealthy people, the server. They say, uh, they say Ukraine has it. There are a lot, of pe- a lot of things that went on, the whole situation. Right? So... So there is, so there is the, the allegation, number one, that somehow Trump is asking for a favor to do something, to investigate 2016 corruption involving CrowdStrike and the server that Hillary Clinton allegedly um, had scrubbed and the DNC got rid of, uh, that we never found. We never, we never got a hold of that uh, DNC server to find out exactly what happened. Instead, it was handed off to you, to. CrowdStrike, and when it came back, there was this giant conspiracy weaved in there with Guccifer and Guccifer 2.0 and GRU, Russian agents that hacked in, and it was all bullshit. The whole thing was bullshit. It was unverified bullshit. Right? So, and here's the other sticking point. Right? Impeachment. That's what we're talking about. That's what the Democrats are going to now turn the boat into and, and yell and yell and scream, and every time they do it, they just sink a little deeper, handing the election to Trump. The other thing, there's a lot of talk about Biden's son. Right? So he's asking for a favor. Now he's saying the other thing. There's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden stopped the prosecution, and a lot of people want to find out about, about that. So whatever you can do with the attorney general would be great. Biden went around bragging that he stopped the prosecution. So uh, if you can look into it, it sounds horrible to me. Now, that's, that's Trump. Is that the smartest thing to say in a conversation uh, that is being obviously recorded and, and surveilled? By the way, this is not a recording. This is a, a, um, an eyewitness. Uh, they have, uh, apparently, they have witnesses in the room that monitor the call. So there's not, uh, as of yet, there's no actual recording of the conversation. There's only a recollection of the conversation. So, but it's, it's accurate enough. So is it smart for Trump to say that? No, not really. But here's Trump. Here's Trump using the information against the Democrats because you can't talk about that. So that's how. That's why Nancy Pelosi is an idiot. You can't talk about impeaching Trump over what he said and not talk about the corruption that Joe Biden and his son are obviously involved in. Now there appears to be actual videotape of him saying these things about, uh, about how he took money from the Ukraines and he was paid. And I don't, I don't have the depth of knowledge to even talk about that at this point. But let's listen to what Trump, how Trump frames it, because that's really what's most important, how Trump frames it to the press. So here he is sitting down somewhere, and this is the President uh, Zelensky of, the, uh, of Ukraine. Listen, just listen to it. It, it explains the whole thing, right? Much. It's a good honor. Thank you very much. Mr. President Biden. Zelensky, have you felt any pressure from President Trump to investigate Joe, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden? So the question is to, to the Ukraine president, did you feel pressure to investigate Joe Biden and his son? I think you read everything. So you, I think you read text. I, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I don't want to be involved to democratic, open, uh, uh, um, elections, elections of USA. No, you heard that we had, uh, I think, good uh, phone call. It was normal. We spoke about many things. And I, so, so I think, and you read it, that nobody pushed it, pushed me. Yes. In other words, no pressure. Because you know what, there was no pressure, and you know there was. And by the way, you know there was no pressure. All you have to do is see it. What went on on the call? But you know that. But you could ask the question, and I appreciate the answer. Go ahead. All right. So, so there is. There's. So the next thing we're going to hear is you see how how Trump is using everything they say. He's just going to spin it and throw it in their face, right? So the next next thing you're going to see is. 
he's now now you're giving Trump the platform to talk about the corruption with Joe Biden. And here you go. Watch. That's the next question. Would you like President Zelensky to do more on Joe Biden and investigate? No, I want uh, him to do whatever he can. This was not his fault. He wasn't there. He's just been here recently. But whatever he can do in terms of corruption, because the corruption's massive. Now, when Biden's son walks away with millions of dollars from Ukraine and he knows nothing, and they're paying him millions of dollars, that's corruption. When Biden's son walks out of China with $1.5 billion in a fund, and the biggest funds in the world can't get money out of China, and he's there for one quick meeting and he flies in on Air Force Two. Uh, I think that's a horrible thing. I think it's a horrible thing, but I'm going far beyond that. Uh, I know the president that I've read a lot about Ukraine. I've read a lot about a lot of countries. He wants to stop corruption. He was elected, I think, number one on the basis of stopping corruption, which unfortunately has plagued Ukraine. And if he could do that, he's doing really the whole world a big favor. I know, and I think he's going to be successful. Mr. All right, so... So he's again, he got you gave him the platform to now talk about the corruption between Joe Biden, Joe Biden and his son in the Ukraine. The the president of Ukraine said, no, no, there's no pressure. It was just a casual conversation. There's corruption. Uh, yeah, we'd, we'd lo- love to help you with corruption. There's no talk of of four hundred million dollars or uh, any quid pro quo being talked about. It's very, very simple. Any allegation of quid pro quo is merely uh, speculation. Uh, because there's no evidence of it. There's no, there's no significant evidence of that. So now you also give Trump the opportunity to talk about Russiagate again, right? You're giving him the platform to talk about this stuff. Mr. President, on Rudy Giuliani, why do you think it's appropriate for your personal attorney to get involved in government business? Well, you'd have to ask Rudy. I will, you tell, you, I will tell you this, that uh, Rudy's looking to also find out where the phony witch hunt started, how it started. You had a Russian witch hunt that turned out to be two and a half years of phony nonsense. And Rudy Giuliani's a great lawyer. He was a great mayor. He's highly respected. I've watched the passion that he's had on television over the last uh, few days. I think it's incredible the way he's done. What he's out is he wants to find out where did this Russian witch hunt that you people really helped perpetrate, where did it start? How come it started? It was all nonsense. It was a hoax. It was a total hoax. It was a media hoax and a Democrat hoax. Where did it start? And Rudy's... So you, you go for, you go for uh, impeachment. Impeach the president. He said, he said something to the Ukraine president. Now you give him the platform. You give him the attention to smear uh, Biden into the ground. Right? Now, I, I, don't, I think that's a ridiculous strategy, to be honest with you. I think it's obvious that Trump is capitalizing on the uh, opportunity. So you could scream impeachment all you want. And Trump is just going to say corruption, 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 all he wants. And the people are going to get nothing. Again, we get nothing out of it. We just get gridlock. And the Democrats are happy because Trump wins. Bernie Sanders loses because that's really the threat. The real threat is from the left is to, to really go after the, the, the uh, core of the corruption, which is money in politics. He's got every right to go and find out where that started. And other people are looking at that, too. Where did it start? The enablers. Where did it all come from? It was out of thin air. And I think he's got a very strong right to do it. He's a good lawyer. He knows exactly what he's doing. And it's- So Trump is pairing Russiagate with now what's going to be called Ukraine Gate. Right? He's putting the two together. He's, putting, he's taking Russiagate and he's putting it in the pocket of Ukraine Gate. And it's just every time the Democrats now talk about uh, talk about you know the the this impeachment this nonsense impeachment over one line in a conversation that they had, Trump is just going to keep railing on on RussiaGate and the, and the thirty three thousand emails. Here it comes. It's very important, Mr. President. Mr. President, do you believe that these emails from Hillary Clinton? Do you believe that they are in Ukraine? Do you think this whole thing? I think they could be. Give me the third. <laughs> that's a that's a very interesting thing. The, the question was, do you think that Hillary Clinton's server <laughs> that they wiped with the 33,000 emails is in Ukraine? And Trump said, yeah, I think so. It's possible. <laughs> That's really ridiculous. 30,000 that she deleted? Yes. Yeah, I think they could very well. Boy, that was a nice question. I like that question. You see how they're feeding him? You see how, how all of this feeds into Trump's 
narrative. How fucking stupid are the Democrats? They, they want to lose. They, they're either that stupid or they want to lose. Because frankly, I think that one of the great crimes committed is Hillary Clinton deleting 33,000 emails after Congress sends her a subpoena. Think of that. You can't even do that in a civil case. You can't get rid of evidence like that. She deleted 33,000 emails after, not before, after receiving a subpoena from the U.S. Congress. I mean, I've never heard that. She's done far worse than that, although I don't know how much worse it can be. But there were many other things she did that were wrong. But that's so obvious. She gets a subpoena from the United States Congress and she deletes them. And then she said, as I remember it, that, oh, well, they had to do with the wedding and yoga. She does a lot of yoga, right? So they had 33,000 emails about the wedding of her daughter and yoga. I don't think so. How she got away with that one is just, but it's one of many. And it's corrupt government because we have corruption also, Mr. President. We have a lot of corruption in our government. And when you see what happened with Hillary Clinton, when you see what happened with Comey and McCabe and all of these people, we have a lot of things going on here too. Hopefully it's gonna be found out very soon. But I, I think that a lot of progress has been made. A lot of progress has been made. <laughs> Wa-la-la. So there you go, right? So so there you have it. There's Trump. Trump putting Russiagate right in the pocket of y- Ukraine Gate. Oh, yeah? You want to impeach me? Let's talk about it. Ukraine Gate. He's bringing back Russiagate. He's bringing back the 33,000 emails, the corruption in 2016. It's just going to be a revisit of that. So if that's your strategy, if you want to beat Trump in Trump's game, you're in Trump's territory. This is what Trump does. This is what Trump is good at. Trump is a smear artist. Trump is a, is a salesman, a con man, a, a, a master puppet, puppeteer. Uh, you're not going to beat him in that, in that respect. Your strategy should have been to try to beat Trump with policy, but the, the Democrats are too, too for sale for that ever to happen, right? It's all about the money. It's all about the money. The donors don't want you talking about you know, healthcare in this country and, um, or lack thereof, or military industrial complex, get rid of student debt in this country, free college tuition at city and state universities. You know, they don't want to talk about that stuff because they can't. They're, they're bought and paid for by the U S oligarchy, the U S oligarchy. So uh, you know, Marcus Conte reporting. I mean, we're not smart. I don't see what anyone could see in anyone else. But you, you are always trying to keep it real. I'm in love with how you feel. I don't see what anyone could see in anyone else. But we you. both have shiny happy fits of rage You want more fans, I want more stage I don't see what anyone could see in anyone else But Don you. Quixote was a steel driving man My name is Adam, I'm your biggest fan I don't see what anyone could see in anyone else but Squinched you. up your face and did a dance Then you shook a little turd out of the bottom of your pants 